This guy is awesome, right? Marty and McGee, they had these great coaches conversations coming up. We'll have those on Monday and Tuesday. But DeMarvin Leal for Mike Elko's defense in College Station is a man, a myth, and he's building the legend. Take a listen. It was obvious last year watching y'all play. There, there's a difference in culture under Jimbo Fisher. It's a different program. How would you define the evolution of this program since Coach Fisher's been there? Coach Fisher always in, in phrases like toughness, effort, discipline, pride. And like he he's had that that point and has dug it into our skulls like every single day, no matter what it is. If it's not the correct way, then it's start over. And man, just knowing the standard, it helped us improve as a team and as a person. How did you guys react in the locker room, I know you're not in there at this moment, but when you learn that your head coach has gone and told, hell yeah, we want Bama. Not only do we want Bama, we're gonna beat Bama. What does that mean to you guys as a unit? As a unit, it just tells how much uh, confidence he has in us, how much he knows what we can do and how we are going to do it. Just to have a coach like that, uh, having our backs like that, is it's amazing. What's the hunger level now? That you I mean you go nine and one in an SEC gauntlet. The only team you lose to is the eventual national champion, who's arguably the best team ever. What kind of hunger does that instill in you guys that you got that close? Lots, lots of hunger. Unfinished business. We're not done yet. Do the people back home wear you out? Like, all right, here we go, let's go. I mean, what what, what kind of support do you have from the home front? Straight positive vibes. Yeah. Is this? You know, everybody knows what we can do, you know, at College Station. 12th man, they all have complete confidence in us, and we, they know exactly what our goal is. To be able to have a fan base like that behind you, it's amazing. This team has good dudes from all over the country, but what's it like for the Texas guys? Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Being able to stay in your hometown, you know, Texas, being able to stay there and ball out with your family clothes, your fans close from back home, it's, it's the best thing ever. Describe for those of us who don't have the opportunity what Kyle Field and the 12th man is like and what the void was like last year when you didn't have it. Honestly, I couldn't say we didn't have it because even though we, did, we had 25% capacity, some games it was extremely loud, like 12th man came ready. And man, it's just, how field itself, it's amazing. First time I walked in, I almost fainted, really, <laughs> honestly. What was there, when, what, when was it? I was a uh, sophomore year of high school. I was coming on an unofficial visit, walked in, you know, said hello to all the coaches. They showed us around, and as soon as we walked on the Kyle Field, it was just like, goodness. Like, if that could be heaven, like, if I would think heaven, think about heaven, that would be it. Get some chicken down there. You get there, the, the whole stadium swinging. It's awesome. Are we not giving AM enough credit right now? I know the pollsters have them at number six, but it seems like everything has been so Alabama and Georgia dominated while this defense might be maybe the best in the country. Well, you made two good points. First of all, I think last year they were maybe getting too much love, in my opinion, in the preseason. It turned out not to be too much at the end of the year yep. when they finished fifth in the, in the final polls. But I think right now they're discounting what was lost on the offensive line. They're discounting the fact that they're having to replace Kellen Mond. But you're right. The defense here is one of the best, and it starts with that defensive line. Uh, Leal is one of, if not the best, defensive lineman in the co conference and maybe even the country. But what he's able to do with the versatility inside and outside, I've heard people compare him to Jonathan Allen, but with more athleticism and versatility, speed off the edge. You see him coming there disrupting in the backfield. He is a grown man that you're going to see have his name called early in the NFL draft here next year. How hard is that, though, to be disruptive in today's college football world where it seems like it is all spread quick, quick, quick? It's certainly hard, but I think, what do we talk about some of the best defensive lines? And I think if you look at this defensive line on tape, it looks an awful lot like Georgia and Bama, who are the measuring sticks for what defensive linemen should look like. And it's come with a couple different things, right? You have depth of talent, which I think they have waves and waves in terms of three five-star guys they've recruited on the defensive line in the last couple of years. You're talking about getting Michael Clemens back, who's a six-year six college football he's player. Like, he's like mentioned old school. Exactly. He's back there. He's yeah. got 6'6", he's got length, he's underrated off the other side of the, the defense. 
So you've got a lot of talent, and you've got a mindset in Mike Elko that has developed one of the best, most physical run-stopping defenses. You go back and look the last couple of years, yep. they're one of the best at doing that in the past couple of seasons, and I think that's only going to continue to get better this season. And Billy Lynch and our friends over at Tex Ags are going to be excited about that. Uh, kind of shades of the wrecking crew defense back in the uh, in the late 80s when they were incredible. All right, one